Hey everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. As a physio named Jonah, that does imply correctly that there was a time when I was an undergraduate student named Jonah and a high school student named Jonah. Today we talk about that journey. Because yes, if you can believe it, at one point a professional university admitted me into their master's program. I know. Great mistake. In today's video, I'm going to be drawing on my own experience as a student going through this process to answer a question that I recently received. If you're the person who left me this excellent question on how to become a physiotherapist starting from graduating high school, hopefully this video is helpful for you and thank you for leaving me such a good question. I'm going to start by sharing what my pathway to PT school was, but then talk more about what your path is likely to be, as requirements do change over time, although most stay constant, so just keep that in mind as we go through the video. If you are new around here, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell. I'm happy to have you here with me. Let's get going. Quick note here, if you don't care what my path was to get into PT school and you just want to know what you have to do, go ahead and skip to this time point, that'll give you the next chapter. I graduated from high school in my hometown of Sudbury, Ontario. I graduated from the IB, or International Baccalaureate program, and my graduation year was 2013, which yes, was 10 years before the release of this video. That number is insane to me, and I can literally feel the sands of time slipping through my fingers as I sit here in our basement alone talking to this camera. If you're a high school student who is watching this and wondering what courses I took, I took all three sciences, bio, chem, and physics in grade 11 and grade 12. I took the grade 12 maths, including calculus and advanced functions, and I also took grade 11 and 12 history, English, and French. All the fun stuff, you know, just all about that fun. After graduation, I went to high school in Ottawa at the University of Ottawa, where I took a bachelor's of science with specialization in human kinetics. It was essentially a kinesiology course, but that had a BSc or bachelor's of science as its foundation. In Ontario, most kin or kinesiology degrees have a social science or science side. I took the science side, which meant that I got to take bio, chem, physics, math, all those fun stuff in university as well. Now, just in case this is the first time you're hearing this, Physiotherapy in Canada is a master's degree. This means that you have to complete your undergraduate degree of four years first, and then you can apply to physio school to do the two-year master's. This is the part of the video where I ask all of you to do um, better than I did if you know that physio is something that you're interested in and you are either a high school student or a university student. Uh, I didn't decide that I wanted to go to physio school really until the fall of my fourth year. Um, maybe late summer of third year if you want to be really generous. And this meant that I had some figuring out to do in terms of how to get the prerequisites that I needed in order to make sure that I was ready when I applied. So if you could know that ahead of time and just make sure that's something that you're keeping an eye on, that'd be very helpful. Fortunately for me though, even though I didn't know I had wanted to go to PT school, I did know that I wanted to do something after undergraduate. So. I had been working very hard to bring my average up after letting it fall way down in my first year of undergrad. This was probably due to me skipping most of my classes to stay home and cook myself elaborate dinners. Thank you for saving up so I could go to school, mom and dad. So at the end of my fall semester in my fourth year at U Ottawa, I applied to Dalhousie, McMaster, Queens, Western, as well as the University of Toronto for their physio programs. My application GPA was a 3.83, which meant that I was above the cutoff required to make the applications in the first place, but more on that in the next section. I was not offered an interview with Dalhousie, so one option off the table, nice and early, but I was offered interviews with the University of Toronto as well as McMaster. Western and Queens were just doing written submissions at the time, meaning that there was no interview process, so I had to wait to kind of see how that process was gonna go until the um, admittance letters came out, and when they did, I was thrilled to learn that they did not like my written submissions and they did not let me into their program. Cool. McMaster at the time was doing a multiple mini interview, essentially walking into different rooms and answering little questions. Toronto was doing the CAP or CAP exam, which was essentially an exam where you go into a computer lab and answer two hours worth of questions on a computer in the same lab as everybody else. Kind of like a written submission, but done under a time constraint in person. Um, and this time, when admittance letters came out, I was actually thrilled to learn that I was admitted to both of those schools, McMaster and U of T. I chose the University of Toronto 
did my master's there for two years from 2017 to 2019, and met my wife in the process. So I'm thrilled about my choice to choose Toronto for very many reasons. That's an overview of what my path was to get into physio school, but let's get more specific now for you. What do you have to do? I'm going to tailor this video and specific pathway to applying to the University of Toronto for their physical therapy program. Why? Because I went there and I liked it. But also I just think it's going to be easier to focus on one school. If you want to do the same process for any other school, just do exactly like we're doing here today. Look up the school and what their requirements are and just work backwards to where you are to figure out what you're going to have to do to get into that school. Let's start by looking at what what the admission requirements are for the University of Toronto's physical therapy program and we'll work our way backwards from there. Wow, that sure is a bullet point list. Enjoy that. I'm going to pick out the most important parts from this list I think to focus on are the parts that could be the most confusing and we'll apply them to what that path is going to look like. From the academic requirements, the two most important parts to consider when we think about our path are the appropriate undergraduate degree and those prerequisite courses that are mentioned here. First up, an appropriate undergraduate degree. This means that you're going to have to go to a university and complete a bachelor's degree. Now, common misconception, this does not have to be in any one specific field. There were many students in my PT class who were vanilla, like me, and just took kin or kinesiology, but you don't have to take any one program. You can take other options as long as you satisfy the other things we're about to talk about. The important part is that no matter what degree you take, you meet the academic requirements. This comes down to grades and certain courses that you need to have. The courses that you have to take are the prerequisite courses. For the University of Toronto, this is one semester of human physiology, one semester of human anatomy, a full year of life slash physical sciences credits, a full year of social sciences slash humanities slash languages credits, and one semester of stats and research methods. Human physiology speaks for itself, as does anatomy, and these credits are readily available in most health science programs that you'll take at university. Life in physical sciences encompasses a few things, like medical sciences, biology, chemistry, biomechanics, physics, and environmental science, to name a few. Again, most undergraduate degrees in science should have multiple courses that satisfy these requirements. Social science and humanities is incredibly broad, encompassing everything from sociology and psychology to history, philosophy, and literally anything about languages. You also have to take stats, which is something I did one summer to make sure that I had that credit. Um, did I enjoy taking that in the summer while it was beautiful outside in Ottawa? Not really. But was it worth it for the A+, 4.0 that I got because it was the only course I was taking at the time? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So those are the courses that you're going to have to take during your appropriate undergraduate degree to apply to your masters. Let's walk this back to high school now. If you're a high school student right now watching this video, what I need you to do is take a deep breath. This is a lot of information, there's a lot going on, and this is all going to play out over the next few years. I know it may not feel like it, because at times when you're thinking about what career path you want to get into, where you're going to go, it feels like you have to figure this all out now. You have to have everything ready, and that is not the case. You don't need to know exactly where you're going to go. You do have time to figure this out. We'll slow down, and I'll try and give you some practical things to focus on here. Your two goals, if you want to have physical therapy as your end goal of your schooling or pretty much anything in the health sciences, are as follows. Graduate high school with a competitive average to apply to university with, which is generally something over 80% at least, and then make sure that you've taken the courses in high school that will give you the prerequisites to take the courses that you'd like to in university. That's essentially it. You may have noticed that there were a lot of sciences credits that we we're talking about in university, so that is something that you're going to have to make sure that we're taking at the grade 11 and likely grade 12 level. There may be undergraduate degrees where you don't require the grade 12 of a biochem or physics, but many do. So if you're going to be applying to a program, I would just check to see for their biology, chemistry, physics credits that are going to be a part of whatever degree you're interested in, just make sure that you know if you need a grade 11 or a grade 12. Again, I want to repeat this, there is no one undergraduate degree or bachelor's that you have to do. 
Instead, pick something that is interesting to you and that you feel is going to help you get to an area you want to go, maybe not one exact field. If physio is something that you're leaning towards and something that you're interested in, then a sciences degree of some variety or kinesiology degree is generally a good place to start looking. Kinesiology is the degree that I did and many of my colleagues did as well because it gives you most of the prerequisites you need for a master's or continuing education in the health field and it's focused towards movement and exercise which are probably things that you're interested in if you're thinking about physiotherapy. Once you're into that undergraduate program and you are preparing to apply to PT school afterwards is where the real academic challenge begins. So let's chat about that. This is the past few years of applying classes to U of T's physiotherapy school. Again, this is specific to the University of Toronto, but it's pretty comparable, I would think, at many of the schools in Ontario. The grades are calculated based on GPA, which I'm not going to go into in a lot of detail, but for a quick reference, generally a 4.0 is an A+, a 3.9 is an A, and a 3.7 is an A-. This means, looking at the past few years, the average sub-GPA of the class that got into the program was a 3.91. This is above an A average. This is very, very high as far as applications go. Now, you don't have to have that because the cutoff was earlier. It was a 3.83 and 3.84 for the past couple of years. The sub-GPA average is the average of the people that actually got in. Now, I will say I am living proof that you do not have to have an average that is reflective of that higher number or the application average of the people who got in. Because when I applied in 2017, I was the proud owner of a 3.83 GPA and the cutoff was a 3.82 and the average of my class that year was a 3.89. Meaning, I was bringing that average down. All of this is to say though, and I'm just going to level with you, I'll be very honest, if you want to get into a continuing education degree in healthcare in Canada, like a master's of physio, occupational therapy, medicine, your studies in university are really something you're gonna have to be diligent about and put your effort into. Even just that cutoff GPA is high and a challenge to get there just to get the minimum application. I worked very, very hard in university arguably harder in my studies and my undergraduate to get my GPA to where it needed to be to apply to physio school than I was academically like challenged and pushed like crazy when I was actually in physio school. The bar that has been set for application is very high, I'm just being honest. If this is something that you want to do, something that you want to pursue, make sure that you are diligent with your grades, you are putting a lot of your energy into your academics, relatively early without burning out, without burning out, but it is definitely something that's going to have to be a priority and something you're focused on because averages like that do not come easily. Well, at least they didn't to me. Maybe they do to you. I don't know, but they didn't to me. Volunteer and real life experience is really helpful as well. It looks good on your applications. It helps you talk about PT, but more importantly, it's going to help you understand if this is actually something you want to do because it happens. People go through the process, get into physio school, go through physio school, get into the profession and realize it's maybe not what they thought it was and it's not exactly for them. So I do recommend the volunteering in a clinic, in a hospital, get exposed to the profession, see what it is. It'll help you on your applications, but it also helps you actually see if this is something that you see yourself doing as a career. Canadian universities are also requiring students to complete CASPER at this point, and that's not the friendly ghost. <laughs> it's a exam that you do online. I never had to take it. It's new since after I applied and everything. So I'm going to attach a link over here for you to learn more about it. It seems like a question and response kind of interview test. I've talked to some people who did it mixed reviews, um, but that's something to just be aware of if you're applying to continuing education healthcare in Canada. The CAP or Computer Administrator Profile is that uh, computer lab exam that I talked about doing earlier. I don't think they do it in a computer lab anymore. I don't think, don't quote me on that. It's essentially U of T's interview 
it is another thing to kind of think about, prepare for as you're going through an application process. It's mostly ethics and morality questions mixed in with reasons why you want to be a part of the profession, what you know about the profession, your vision for the profession. So study up on what you think about the profession, some burgeoning areas for new growth, as well as doing some practice ethics and morality questions. All right. That was a lot of info. I'm gonna try and streamline that down into a few lines to just help focus it together in terms of what this pathway looks like. All right, so let's run this. If you are a high school student right now, starting in high school, you need to graduate with an average above 80 and make sure that you've taken the courses required for the undergrad of your choosing. If you're choosing kin, this probably means taking all the grade 12 sciences and possibly math as well. In your undergraduate degree, you need to maintain at least an A- minus to A average, particularly in the courses that are going to be part of your prerequisites. Make sure that you have all the prerequisite courses that you need and get volunteer and placement experience in the PT field. I think that's officially clear as mud for the day, so thank you for sticking around here until the end of the video. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, it was helpful, you feel like you have a bit more clarity, but please feel to drop any questions that you have in the comment section for me down below. I'll do my best to answer them there, and who knows, they could spark a whole new video kind of like this one was. So I look forward to chatting with you soon. But most importantly, guys, as always, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video. Good luck.